I mean, wherever that comes up, you forget about the cigarettes and, and dependency on cigarettes, but when that comes up, that desire to, like, have a cigarette to feel prepared or ready to do something, what that actually showing me is that whatever that thing is that I'm about to do or thinking about doing is something I don't feel like stable as myself to do it or face it. You know, maybe it's like replying on an email to somebody or something. So, like you can really see there how smoking became a hindrance in that it would, you know, I mean, using it as a coping mechanism, coping is not dealing with anything, you're not actually dealing with it, you're not, you're not actually putting an end to it, stopping it, you're just allowing it to continue, allowing yourself to be enslaved to it. <coughs> so, within stopping smoking, I can really see how much I have used that to try and give me a sense of like being ready to do something or being more prepared, more calm, more stable, which is really kind of funny. <laughs> how can you? Like, how <laughs> come a cigarette do all that? But, it's fascinating. And, and this has also been my experience with eating, where for maybe two years or so oh, I've been exploring and investigating who I am within eating in regards to eating and relationships to food and what am I eating for the mind like according to programmed beliefs and thoughts like eating for taste. You know, I realize taste is like a lot of programmed. And so I was just testing out like a lot of pre people conceptions assumptions in relation to tastes and preferences of food, like a uh, Brussels sprout, for example. I had this assumption I just hate Brussels, Brussels sprouts. So, okay, test that out, you know, do I unconditionally go and eat some Brussels sprouts and see what happens, you know, and see what comes up if anything comes up, like reactions reactions to the taste, or to a smell, or to a sight of it, or any thought that comes up, because that's all just bullshit. So, and then I found out, wow, I really can enjoy Brussels sprouts. They're great. But what's fascinating, so I've been doing that with many things, uh, in specifically in relation to food, just trying things I never tried, and uh, really really, um, going down to, did you see the eye twitch? There was an eye twitch. There, it was like, um, but with, uh, trying things I never tried, and with a tendency to, like, just try it, um, like, not p prepared. Not a, not a prepared meal, like where it's a bunch of shit mixed together. 
like just individual ingredients like like I remember in the very beginning of me ex deciding to I'm going to experiment and inve investigate who I am within food and eating I realized that I'd never really tried avocados I had tried guacamole once and so I was at the store and I thought let me try an avocado and so I had some car and I'm like, okay, what do, what should, how am I going to eat it? Uh, I guess, should I mash it up with some garlic, or, or should I slice it, or etc. And I realized, just eat the avocado. <laughs> like, I could just eat it and not have to do anything to it. And I tried that, and I was like, blown away by the flavor. Um, not that it was, you know, it's not like the flavor of like a, you know, takeout meal or something where it's like, whoa, this is flavor. <laughs> but it's like, kind of interestingly relates to point to do with sex. But I don't know if I'm really going to go into that right now kind of expensive. So, um, with the food, and I had a lot of, like, uh, mind shit, mind dependencies, mind relationships to food, especially, like, sweets, things like that, and so, similar to the experience with smoking, so I realized um, that it's me doing it, you know, I was realizing the same thing within uh, foods and stuff that I would eat, where, you know, like sugary type foods, sweets, I realized I had all these things attached to them, like, like it felt comforting to eat it, or it felt like it would give me some energy, or, um, you know, so really a bunch of things I was doing to myself. Using food as the excuse. And how I really tested this out to know for sure, like this is me doing it, was like in moments where I would be drinking coffee and I would have had several coffees. Maybe I would have had five coffees that day. And I would have a thought like, oh man, I've actually had a lot of coffee today. You know, is that going to, you know, what's going to happen? And then I would start feeling like jittery, kind of like that caffe caffeinated and tripping over my words kind of a little bit, that kind of thing, and heart fluttery. And so I would notice, I mean, that would happen a lot when I would drink uh, coffee, like you know, usually in the past it was if I had maybe more than one coffee in a day. If I had a coffee at night, I would just be woo and up all night. And like that's what I really began testing with the coffee. I was like to see is that really real or is it just from a belief? And after investigating that, every time that would happen and I saw the connection that there uh was actually would be thoughts going on uh, like on a subconscious level, like not on a conscious level where you're like, oh gee, I wonder, am I going to get jittery because I've had so many coffees today? No, it's like subconscious, it's like, it's not in words, it's kind of like quantum, like a quantum thought, like a, it's wordless almost, you know, because it's so fast in a way, um, where it's just kind of like this oh, I had a lot of coffee, I wonder what's going to happen, you know. Um, and you miss it, you know, because you just kind of programmed it into your subconscious over time through beliefs and information that's presented to you that you accept and, and validate and validate in yourself and 